Hello GCSE Geography. This short video is all about fieldwork sampling strategies. Okay. Um, these come up in paper three um, of edXL A, which is the exam board that we do. Um, and they typically come up every year. So it's really important we understand what we mean by the three different sampling strategies. Before we begin, we're going to uh, explain the difference between methods and sampling strategies. Now, a method is how you collect your data. Okay, so we've got things like an EQS, an environmental quality survey, questionnaires, uh, beach profile, sediment analysis, census data, land use mapping, and house price data. This is not all of the methods you can use, but these are just some of the ones that we use. Um, just remember, there are two types of methods, primary and secondary. Questionnaire would be a primary method. This is because you collect the data yourself. But a census data would be a secondary method. And that's because the data has been collected by somebody else on your behalf. Now, a sampling strategy is how we decide which data to pick. Okay, so it's quite different from the method. Um, it's, it's the way we decide which data to pick. So for example, with your questionnaires, um, you, you, with the questionnaires, how are you going to decide who you speak to? Um, or for example, with the beach profile, how are you going to know where to go on the beach? And that's where these three come into play. We've got three different sampling strategies. These are the only three you need to know about, random, systematic, and stratified. Okay, let's begin with random sampling. Well, the key thing about random sampling is that everybody has an equal opportunity of being picked. Okay, so everybody has an equal opportunity of being picked. Now with random sampling, you don't simply choose somebody at random. So for example, my favorite color is red, therefore I'm more likely to pick the red person on here. Um, what we use is a, a random number generator. And this will give you a number. So it may give you the number four, for example. So you would count one, two, three, four, and that would be the piece of data that you pick. Okay, so here we've got eight different pieces of data. We've got three red faces, three green faces, one yellow face, and one blue face. Okay, the advantages of random sampling, it reduces bias. So as I said to you earlier, you may pick the person nearest to you or the person with the, the friendliest face or, or whatever. This um, random sampling reduces bias and stops that from happening. However, a key disadvantage is it's not a representative sample. So for example, you may do a random number generator and it may give you the number three. If we go one, two, three, we may end up speaking to the yellow person. However, there is only one yellow person on here. Most people are green or red. Therefore, it would not be a representative sample. And we use random sampling for our sediment analysis in the coastal field work. That's the only time we use it um, in, in our work. Okay, systematic sampling. Now, systematic sampling is fairly uh, easy to do. So we use it quite a lot in year 10 and year 11. Again, we have... Uh, eight different pieces of data here, so eight different faces on here. Now the key thing about systematic sampling is that we use intervals. So we, we collect the data at intervals. This could be based on time. So for example, you may uh, choose to pick your data every two minutes. It could be based on distance. So for example, you may decide to stop every 200 meters along a road and collect your data there. Um, so there's, there's lots of different ways we can use systematic sampling. Uh, as an example here, we're going to pick every second person. So you can see the yellow person's picked, the green person, the red person, and the blue person. So we've ignored these people here, and we've picked every second person. Now the good thing about systematic sampling is it's very quick and easy to do. So you can turn up at a location, and you can do your systematic sample very quickly and set it up very easily. However, the key disadvantage is that you may miss data between the intervals. So for example, if you are collecting data along a road and you're stopping every 200 meters, 
there may be some really important data at 100 meters that may be missed. Similarly here, the red person may have some really important data that we want, but that person gets missed because we're only picking every second person. So remember, systematic sampling is done at intervals. Now, because it's quick and easy to do, we use systematic sampling for our beach profile in the coastal field work and our land use mapping and EQS in the urban field work. Okay, the last type of sampling, and probably the most difficult, is what we call stratified sampling. Now, stratifying something means putting it into layers. So that gives you a bit of an idea of how this sampling works. Again, we've got eight people here. Now, this time we need to think about who we've actually got in our data. So we've got three green people. We've got three red people. Only one yellow person and only one blue person. Therefore, to make this sample stratified, we need to speak to more green people and more red people. So what we could do is we could speak to the yellow person, we could speak to two of the red people, two of the green people, and the blue person. Therefore, our data is gonna include more information from the red and green people, and that's because there are more of them in the population. So the advantage of this is that it gives us a very representative sample. Okay, it tells you about the realistic population uh, that you're looking at. But the disadvantage of this is it's very time consuming. And that's because you have to do some research before you begin your investigation. Now we use this for our questionnaires in the urban field work when we went to King's Cross. And you may remember that we looked at age and ethnicity as a way of making our sample more stratified for King's Cross. Okay, so your turn now. Can you please draw three columns on your paper and divide these into our three sampling strategies, stratified, systematic, and random? Can you add each of the statements below into the correct column? And if it's an advantage, put a plus next to it and put a minus next to it if it's a disadvantage. If you have any more questions, please speak to your geography teacher.